Mouse Sports versus Godsend going live in front of your eyes. My name is Mitch. With me is Dean, and we're already into the pistol round. As Godsend buy up a lot of utility and pressure early towards A, but then slow it down massively. They're hoping to catch Mouse Sports trying some counter aggression after spotting out that initial play by Rops, but nothing is to be seen. Mouse Sports staying exactly where they were, and the most they get is Chris J rotating to the A bomb site to have a late round 3 2 split. Yeah, they could also have Woxic rotate back up pretty quickly because he is playing passive in the spawn. But as you can see, the T is already moving up true long. It doesn't look like they're going to take a very long time to commit. If they are going to commit, that is, because they still have quite a bit of time remaining. But as you can see, setting up the utility right now and actually mouse peek it in. Not going to initially spot them. They see the smokes now coming over, so that should give them the info. But quite a bit of damage being taken there by Chris J. And Rop's only able to get one before he falls. So this is a lot of pressure now on Woxie because he plays around the bomb site, doing what he can. It's not enough for anything. And again, it's just a single frag from that rotator of Carrigan and yeah, Frozen alone. He's rotating up through connector. Yeah, he made a lot of noise opening the door. Sticko was waiting close and he is not going to be letting that one slip away. Frozen just walking right past him, making it an easy one. 1-0. One God saying they pick up the pistol around here on overpass. But it is worth noting, this is their map pick. Not a map that most sports play a lot. But when the one time they did play it, which was around a month ago now, I believe, up against Fnatic. They, they did lose a 16-11. But that's a relatively close enough game. And that's against Fnatic. So I do still think that this one could certainly be competitive. Overall, the series, the VO hasn't gone too bad for Godsend, but you do obviously have to favor most sports coming in overall. Yeah, the one time we saw them play it against Fnatic, they had six rounds on the CT side, so it's definitely not the best of starts for them to lose out on, excuse me, on the pistol. You really want to see them rocking up with a little bit more flair towards the start of that because those early rounds could be some of the best for them considering the scoreline versus Fnatic. But obviously with such a small sample size, you never know, and Godsend, not as good. Of an overpass team as Fnatic, you could definitely argue. Mouse Sports have gone in for a force buy and walk six sneaky beaky inside the smoke. Here's all the steps down to connector, leaving Chris J on edge, ready to shoot, but Sticko drops behind him and catches him completely off guard. Woxic, the man with the ears earlier on, no longer has a face as it got torn apart by a Mac 10, leaving it into a 5v3. And a position now for Mouse Sports that isn't looking too great. Especially when you lose connector and toilets, those are the two places that towards A that where God Center favoring, where you're gonna see a lot of impact from the pistol, or definitely the, the best chance for the pistols to answer. Yeah, but Godsend dealt with it very well, especially in towards the connector, as you said, that little double drop down, or rather the one player dropping the other ready to peek in from the stairs itself. There are still three players alive, obviously, but only Carrigan's on the A side of the map for now, so it's not really going to be a lot expected to be done. As I say that, they're going back. Rops was waiting in the water. Was able to get himself one, does a small bit of damage, and finds the info that at least two more players were coming in from this position. And I think them realizing that that was the case, especially with Crystal pushed so far forward on A, they decide that they want to back it off again. They brought it back up now towards A. This time, they won't find any resistance going to the bomb site itself. And they do, of course, know where Frozen is. He's that final player over on B. He's been firing off plenty of shots. And it looks like they do want to try and actually hunt this one. At least with the SMGs. But there's already a few players tagged up quite heavily. Ideally, they want to try and keep all of these players alive. And in the end, they will. Michael Lele with the final uh, with the final kill. 2-0 for Godsend. You didn't expect too much out of that round for most parts. Considering it was just the pistols and Kevlar. But now they're forced to take the eco. This is a chance, obviously, for those SMGs to try and build up quite a bit of money. And give Godsend very likely a 3-0 start in this in this map and in the series. It is definitely the start that they needed. I mean, realistically, how much can you believe in Mouse Sports when they've just got these weaker pistols out? A 3-0, like you're saying, is quite likely. When you look at this map overall, though, for Godsend, I I feel like it's not it's not as consistent as you would hope for. Nordavind, I mean, they've been causing upsets across the board recently and Certainly there, what was it, two days ago? Uh, it would have been in the Elise Invitational, I'm guessing. Godsend had a really poor show using all their BO1s, I think, to start it out. If I'm not remembering. Uh, it was in Lupe. Oh, that was Lupe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just had to look there via so I could confirm. Oh, hang on. They, they heard that reload, right? Yeah, they definitely heard Carrigan reloading as he was running in. He still nearly managed to catch Zen. I got a little bit too close for comfort. He is on A health. Carrigan himself only... One more, as he's up on nine, tries to swing around, but against the Mac-10 and with the smoke kind of covering his vision as he actually turned the corner. Unfortunately, a little bit too hard for him to get that frag. So much damage was done, but unfortunately no kills as of yet. So the question is, can Rops maybe capitalize on a couple of those now? The Deagle certainly could be 
very dangerous in this position to four of those players. Just one to the body would likely be enough. Okay, um, I don't think they're even going to risk going in any direction he could be. Presuming he'll be able to save the Deagle, although obviously his objective <clears throat> is to find one of these SMGs still hunting. He has no idea how low they are, and that's really the limiting factor. If one of them had full HP, they probably would. Stick goes the closest to him with an AK in hand, and Rops is going to go out after this. Why not? I mean, he doesn't want to save the Deagle and so much damage. He can't follow through on the kill. And the team I was thinking about was Apex. The, those were the, that was the team they lost to in the Elisa Invitational. Um, I thought it might have been Nordivin, but that was actually a BO3 as well, yeah. But with Nordivin taking that, you know, it was 16-14. It was a tight one. They lost to Phase 16-6, which is definitely a respectable team to lose to. They've managed to shut it out against the CIS Giants of Forza of Spirit as well, who do a lot of damage. Aves and lost to Nip. I mean, there's nothing too scary there. The Nordivin game maybe shouldn't be a loss, but the fact that they lost 16-14, you know, you, every team has their off days. Mouseport's definitely coming into this one a little bit more blind uh, just due to not playing it much at all. But it is still mouse sports. <laughs> yeah, well, they still that. have all of those names that you're seeing right now in your mm -hmm. scoreboard. So that's why we, we never want to count them out even here on Overpass. And moving on, although the, the following maps are also strong for Godsend being Train and Nuke, mm -hmm. they're also pretty goddamn good for mouse. So that one's they, that's True. when it's definitely going to, I think, going to pick up in difficulty for them. So winning Overpass is definitely a necessity for Godsend. I know at the same time that OG didn't do a lot of damage, especially not two months ago when Godsend faced them, but they had a really, really strong train back then. I didn't catch the game versus Ents or Aves that happened since, but that game versus OG was really impressive, and I would imagine things have only gotten better since then. So I wouldn't count them out of train for sure, like you like you said as well. It's not a, they're not, it's not a terrible map. When we get to nuke, the thing that plays out is a very comfortable mid ground. I mean, that's where you'll see the, the true depth of both of these teams hitting each other head on. I really hope we make it there because God sent incredibly impressive when it came to nuke. And on the other hand, mouse sports are mouse sports. They play that map a lot. And I would imagine they would take it, but I would love to see the, the scrappy fight that would go down. This is obviously a tech pause, right? Yeah, there was a there was some SV spikes on the server, so I think they're actually going to be swapping over. To a new oh, server, okay. from what I'm understanding, the admin has has gone ahead and left for now, and he said he would send them uh, send them new ones. So I guess that means that we're probably gonna have to take a break for a minute mm -hmm. while they get onto that new server, and then of course actually match medic it back to this point. Yeah, unfortunately, then we will take a break and we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, presumably, a change of server, as you said, Dean. Looking at what we've yeah. got, you don't want anyone lagging. You want you want the best possible quality you can have. And sometimes servers they just mess up and, and swap is needed. Alrighty, my dudes, everything is sorted. Everything's fixed. We're ready to rumble with Godsent versus Mouse Sports. Three to zero. Everything's back to the way it was. It was just a bit of back end server issues with connections and all that technical jargon, but we're good to go. Now Sports early on, one of aggress towards A. They decide to back off on short, but Chris J keeps on moving forward. He's tucked in on long, and Crystal might be in danger in just a little bit. He's gonna find contact really early here on short. I forgot I need to fix my X-ray once again, but we are now all good, and I can see what's going on. And so far, just a one-for-one -one trade. Zendo decides to capitalize as that smoke is being tossed in towards Monster, and with that, catches himself a kill. But look at this, Chris J. He had the chances. The op had a chance as well. What is going on right now? The shots are just not being connected. But the most sports players, Rops is in trouble up on top of the bomb site, completely blind. And Godsend, they've overrun this B bomb site. This round is over. It is indeed. Mouse sports just completely strong armed out of B. Godsend with a blitz through, using up those lighter weapons to get up in their opponent's faces. And Chris J gets a kill, which is decent to take away the armor, but it is only a Mac 10 recovered. Something that I guess Godsend could use in the next round to try and farm a little bit of extra cash, but they definitely won't be crying for its loss. Like Lele. Good luck to hunt this one down, considering he's got a. Oh, never mind. He's upgraded the UMP to a, an AUG. So he'll take that. And with just the AWP left on Woxic, they would like to take it down, but it is a little bit risky to try and hunt in in those last couple of seconds. You don't want to be losing an extra set of armor and all that sort of stuff. With the money built up for Godsent, though, that is far from their mind. I mean, they have so much cash to play with coming into just the fifth round. Yeah, looking pretty comfortable with this beginning, despite having, of course, a little bit of a pause as there was the, the slight server issue that we needed to have resolved and likely going to be going up 5-0. I mean, there's still the up-in play for Waxik. You definitely can't count that out. He can be an incredible player. 
So far yet to get a kill, but it's still very early on in this one, so I'm not gonna really look at that too much. And they do also, of course, have multiple deagles actually behind it to try and give the support alongside a good bit of control as they pushed up here on B. Most of the focus from the T side is definitely going to be on this side of the map as well. Crossing over, walks six spots, the second player moving in. With that, will decide to just come back now and see if he's going to be able to help his teammates out. And those smokes for the moment, they're letting all of the CTs set themselves up. Time and Carrigan, he pounces out. I don't think he'll expire in the spawn though, that's the issue. Yes, and he has easily two kills here, or at least the first one. Oh, they know where the last player is now as well, but with the AK, Carrigan's still good to pick up Zen. Crystal tucked into the right as expected as well. And Carrigan pushing forward gets the reload off. But Michael Lele domes him walking in through Monster and five on the board for Godsend. That came a little bit close. For the round that was in it as well, considering God or Mouseports had deagles for the most part, to walk out having killed four players is something we needed to see from them. It at least puts a bit of a dent in the T-side economy. Thing is, though, they're building up so many rounds on this terrorist side. We know Mouse Sports also weren't the best up against Fnatic. Six rounds on their CT side where they started as well. We do definitely need to see a big upturn in performance. Otherwise, this map may be forfeit. Yeah, with it not being a map that most play all too often, you definitely wanted them to have a stronger starter on their CT side and so far have not been able to find that. They do have the double-up setup in play as a bit of an adjustment right now, and it does seem like they will find contact. Chris J is definitely going to be finding a couple players peeking around on long. Takes that first shot on Crystal and realizes, okay, that's a good advantage. I'm going to fall back before the rest of them close in the distance. They do know that no one's pushed up close in the back rooms, though, so that wasn't something he was worrying about because they have the other up here. Oh. I mean... Considering how the previous round went, that's definitely the little burst of energy Mouse Sports needed. The opening duel as well, but the trade back by Zen might be a little bit scary. They go back out and take some control in toilets to attempt to pull it all the way back, but Chris J can't get it done. And crossing to the site, he was almost caught off, but Rop swings as well and punishes Zen for that. Chris J now knows there's a player up close. He's hoping he would get pushed down, but it doesn't happen. And now falling back to the bomb site, Rops has a flash, which he could have thrown into long, but instead, and he does in fact in the end, but Chris J, the flash only allowed Carrigan to get out to bomb site as Chris J continues to move in, pushing all the way up in toilets. It's not going to be expected, even as they take Rops down. It's difficult to expect him in that position, looking to finish off Carrigan, and they do so successfully, but they missed Chris J as he misses the shot. What's happening? That was it. I mean, he caught them completely off guard. They forgot all about him. And somehow, he just completely whiffs the shot. Oh, okay. Frozen done some damage with that nade onto Madden just a moment ago as well. So he did have him tagged up. But Madden just peeks out, finds the headshot, then just peeking above that bin of Frozen and claims a sixth round for Godsend. What is going on? That was a shot for Chris J that definitely should have been connected. As we had came back in from the pause as well, we've seen Woxic missing uh, an op shot that he probably should have found as well. Most parts are not only having a slow start because of the map, but definitely individually taking a while to warm up here. Calling in the pause and perhaps realizing that as into this round, unfortunately, they really don't have enough to get the full buyout. So it's likely just going to be maybe some pistols, some Cavalier, as you see already for Frozen. Meaning there is a very good opportunity and a very good chance that Godsend will be leading 7-0 after this one. Although we've seen the pistols in the last one do a decent amount of damage, so you can't count them out. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, Mouse Sports had the impact when it came down to those pistols. That one there as well, quite close, coming into round 6. So that is... The sort of thing we needed to see from them, but it's getting to the point where it might be a little bit too late. Those close rounds aren't anymore going to cut it because Godsend on six rounds, they're comfy. They've got their T side foundations built. Now they're looking to build a palace on it and it might just be shining by the end of it. By the time we come to that second half, Mouseports want to be pulling themselves a lot closer. But as we said, this is not the round where that's likely to happen, despite the damage they did previously. You can see God Center approaching this one with much more of a level head, slowing the play significantly. And as soon as Sticko sees a player in the bottom of Connector, look at his body language. Out of there. Pulls right back. Because he doesn't want to give those pistols the chance, even though he tagged Chris J up. Yeah, that damage did end up helping, helping them out quite a bit. It was an interesting position I was going to point out Woxic, of course, being up close on long. 
doing so on his own with the P250. Normally, you like having someone back a little bit further, but I guess the goal was if they did go towards long, at least he'd find that info very early, so then maybe they could shift the stack over towards the A bomb site, which has still been found, as we've seen that kill being found around short, of course, onto Chris J instead. So they have a setup here, a couple players to try and hold this down. The Deagle for Rups and Nade gonna be going over. He actually spots one player already crossing to the truck. Hits the headshot, and Crystal manages to adjust back as well to take down Madden. But it's probably still not going to be enough in this situation for them to actually be able to win the round. Unless Woxic on this flank can come up massive. Which I think Sticko is being at least somewhat cautious of. Although, hang on. The P250 will still have a chance. Not quite, though. The AK gets the instant headshot. So, yeah. Frozen. He'll look for maybe another killer through here. Try and do a bit of further damage. But Godsend will indeed be leading 7-0. They're off to a really good start here on their own map choice. And you have to stress the importance of this series. So we said it earlier coming into the end of the Hard Legion game. But when you look at the way the groups are set up right now, Group B, Godsend, have nine points, and Mouse Sports have six. Godsend are barely in a position to make it forward in Road to Rio. Losing this out would mean that they then drop because Mouse Sports on he head to heads would overtake them. And that would not be what they want at all. So they need to win this series essentially to continue forward. And whichever one doesn't is then. I, will, I don't want to say likely, but in a position where they could very probably be the ones that, that don't make it forward. A hugely important one, especially if it's Mouse Sports, because then they would fall very far behind content, contention, being stuck on six points. They'd have to rely on both Copenhagen Flames and North losing their next game and Mouse losing, uh, winning the next. And that's just, a, you don't want to add that many win conditions, right, <laughs> to make it forward, rely on other yeah. teams' results and all that sort of stuff. Especially not if you're a team like Mouse, who most people would be expecting to, uh, of course, be making it true. And it's been a little bit of a tough one for them so far. Right now, pulling out the double up setup between Woxic and Frozen. I guess Chris J not feeling that after that previous round, instead opting for the M4. He's just going to walk straight through the mid smoke. Was there a flash or anything in? I, I don't believe so. He steps out, finds four players watching it. Goes down, and now it's Woxic on mid with this up, who's going to have to try and hold it. And there's going to be a player popping up through Connector as well. Actually, he hits that shot while blind. A bit of damage being done. Kind of fortunate that he does. That allows him to retreat back and play a little bit safer. So he is still alive for now. They are in the four on five. And if Wax gets this kill, there is maybe something to still be pulled back. But no, he goes straight down. He needed the first, so Wax could actually come in and then try and help him hold it with the second player nearby. There's the shot by Woxig to pull it back a little bit. One man down. Godsend still look favorably to the A bomb site, but there's three CTs here. Mouse Sports just finishing a rotate to put Frozen in position up behind on the dumpster. Godsend gonna have a rough time. Carrigan's position not expected at all. They thought they cleared it, but Madden in with a double. He hears Woxic scope Ooh. and runs around the corner, ripping his head clean, clean off and putting eight to zero on the board. Godsend are dominating at the moment. And Dean, I've just noticed actually, looking at the upcoming games for Copenhagen Flames, that's the only team that hasn't beaten Maus, well, including Godsend, that's at that nine point mark. So in fact, if Maus Sports lose this, as long as Copenhagen Flames don't win their game versus FaZe, which, I mean, as long as Maus Sports beat Copenhagen Flames, let's put that safely. That I, don't, I don't know how that's going. 10 to seven for FaZe. So they are winning the first map. Mm -hmm. FaZe are. I, I would I would feel comfortable if I was Maus that Copenhagen wouldn't win that, although they have done quite well. They beat North, but FaZe are just a different a different caliber of opponent. So long as because then Maus play Copenhagen Flames next. So as long as they beat them, they they would still be they would take Copenhagen Flames spot. Um, but if they lose to Godset, North would also beat them on head to heads. I'd, I'd like it if we have a little, had a little graphic to show, but we don't unfortunately. But yeah, he's a bit easier for people to understand. <laughs> Basically, in short, this is a very important game for most sports, and it's it's not going there too well go. in the beginning. Oh, there's a weapon. Oh, not able to escape away. Sticko was ready to follow up immediately. Wants the headshot to avoid taking any further damage and keeping this in a relatively stable position, even with Madden being low. Or after that previous round, should I call him Mad Lad? <laughs> God damn it. And yeah, just grouping up together. I like this. They're leaving one player at the moment to hold back towards Connector. Is that because the weapon's still down there? That's what I'm curious about. It's just a Mac 10. I guess making sure they aren't going to be flanked out. There is only the scout right now actually up on A to try and defend as well. And Rob's despite actually nearly connecting the shot. I think he might have done a little bit to Crystal. But does get taken down in the end there by Michael Ailey. And they're going to bring this straight back over towards B. So having Sticko around Connector now is a positive. Because he can drop down make sure there's no one in that position to slow down their rotation. And they've actually pulled both of those CTs back up to A. So they're going to find this bombsite for free. 
Oh, even get a kill off the back of it. Carrigan had rotated back into heaven quick, uh, quickly. But not quick enough to actually get into position before he'd be spotted. So it's all on Frozen. He's running away as you would expect. The Kevlar will be a nice little bonus in this next round. But they are down 9-0. We need to see Mouse Sports ideally pull them back to six remaining rounds if they want to be at all happy with this CT side. I was also just taking a look at Godsend's position at the moment. I hope I've got this right. Otherwise, I'm sure Devilwalk's going to be coming after me. But uh, at the moment, I think their best case scenario is lower bracket. Um, because they lost to both FaZe and G2. So unless they can manage to overtake G2 uh, in points, if it comes to head-to-heads, they, they won't be making it. That does mean that they would take have to take Mouse Sports and Mobby Star Riders. If they take Mouse Sports, chances are the Mobby Star could very well go their way. That would then put them in a spot where they could make it into the upper bracket if G2's games don't go according to plan. Again, it's contingent on G2 and FaZe not winning uh, a couple of their upcoming games just because, obviously, head to heads are what matters when they tie up. Yeah, but it still keeps them in with the chance of that, of course. Of course. If, of course. if they aren't to get themselves the victory in, in both of those games, then at that point, it doesn't really matter with the other victories. I believe they can only get through the, the lower portion then. Like a Lele. Oh, I was going to say creeping up short might not be expected so early, but obviously the scope has been heard and more so the, the little boring there towards his feet. Doesn't affect him too much in terms of damage, but who is affected by damage is Sticko. He gets caught trying to boost up. They are going to try and bounce off the back of his still. And they will manage to actually trade it down to the three on three. There's one more player around here being Rops. He needs to just try and delay as long as he possibly can. Maybe try and take one kill. And yeah, going to reposition on the back of the bomb site now. Sentry moves forward. He's actually going to go up and catch the time. And the bomb in hands for Zen. He was defenseless. Crystal tried to help him out, but was a little bit too late on it, unfortunately. At least gets the trade. And with that, will now confirm the bomb plan. But a two on two. One of the better spots in the to being in. They finally brought it to a point where this retake is not looking terrible moving into it. Chris J is flanking with a MAC-10 though, but that is a gap in Godsend's defense. They've not realized he could come out through Monster. No one's checking for it. Smoke down on short. Chris J starts running though. Crystal's hearing it. He just focuses. Oh, he didn't even realize. He thought that was his teammate. As Michael Lele comes up, got to deny that bomb, defuse, and he, he doesn't realize he's sticking it, spraying away with a Tech-9, but he can't get it done. Mouse Sports, they put around on the board at last. I don't know how Chris J got away with that. He was running around for two to three seconds. Crystal had no idea. Yeah, they were not being quiet, and they, they couldn't really afford to be as the time was getting kind of low at that point. And you see, and of course, he, just the bomb being stuck in the end. He, he didn't even really have to stick. He could have tapped it, tried to bait out the steps since he heard them, but no, just gambling that that final player was going to be a little bit out of position worked out perfectly for a mouse part to do finally get around on the board. But also not living with any players, that's not really ideal. You can see the reinvestment costs them everything. It doesn't give them everything either. Chris J is going to be stuck on the Deagle. But this is their opportunity, as I said, to try and build back up towards that sixth round mark. Get close to it even. That that really is all they're aiming for at this point. And then worry about recovering on the T side as well. Oh, Chris J, despite having the Deagle, could catch this aggression on mid. No one's currently watching at all. Yeah, gets himself that first kill on Michael Lele. There's one more up close ready to follow up with it actually the teammate who was initially there to support got ready to flash over not expecting zen to peek in so he couldn't give any help so it is traded back to the four on four but that's not too bad for mouse considering they only lost the deagle player and in the meantime we've got some good control now towards b they've pushed all the way up they're gonna be happy to leave frozen by himself to hold as the rotate from carrigan moves to the a bomb site mouse sports also aggressing up on long Waxu's going to be holding it with the AWP while Rops, close on the A1S, looks to trade out as they get up and around that corner. That is if Waxu doesn't deal with them first and cause that distraction in the meantime. God sent with 40 seconds left. They're going to be forced into not the best of pushes. I mean, they're essentially running into this site blind, having no information as to where the CTs are holding. The long push in particular could be the problem, but Madden, he's tucked away. Look at the patience on this man. As Rops comes through, that's a free kill. But Woxic answers on the op. Madden now knows that he's there. Jumps up to try and bait the shot and gets him to do so successfully on the fallback. Zen takes the kill and looks for another good damage done. But Carrigan's still staying alive and he gets it. It was only 16 seconds left on the clock either way. But closing out the round in style, grabbing the kills and putting it 9-2. to two, Even despite that long push not going according to plan. Yeah, good recovery. Apologies. Yeah, really good recovery. As I was saying there, the time was awkward because of that bomb being dropped even uh, in on behind the bomb site. 
in the control of one of the CT players, and then the flank coming in was just putting a stop to that completely. There was really no chance anymore there for Godsend. Well held by Mouse Sports. They get themselves their second round again in not a very clean fashion, which means that there will be that one player left on the Deagle. And Chris J seems willing to sacrifice time and time again because he has gone for it. But they're up against another buy here. Godsend had built up a ridiculous amount of money. So they're not struggling. They have plenty more left over to buy again in this next round. So we need to see Mouse Sports continuing with this, this new kind of trend of winning for themselves on Overpass. Madden again being a very aggressive player for Godsend. Not the one to actually pick up that opening, but he did manage to do quite a bit of damage and also spot the second player. Obviously being helped out by Sticko to find the frag itself. They're going to boost up now, see if they can spot that player around barrels and actually find a kill elsewhere. Crystal takes down Chris J. The spam as well on Rops brings him so low. This is not looking good. One minute on the clock as Mouse Sports look to hold down B with two players. They're hearing some exchanges of a scope outside, but Michael Lele is the one to eliminate Carrigan and stop that in its tracks. Mouse Sports have the rotate from Waxic, who's on his way down to the B bomb site, but he might not make it here in time. Rops has only 11 HP remaining. Hooked in behind the side, at least he's got some cover, but Waxic's pushed back, unable to help as the Molotov blocked his path. And now may just consider saving in a 1v5. Look at the HP from Michael Lele and Madden, but of course he has no idea. No way to know that. Oh, he's just being hunted. I don't think saving this off is going to be easy. Even if he gets his first kill right now, obviously they're going to know where he is. Crystal the plug. Okay, he expects it, but doesn't hit the shot. So yeah, no op going to be saved over. Another convincing round from Godsend. They bounce back. Uh, as I said, most parts are trying to get up close to that sixth round score mark as they could. Now losing that one is going to stop that from being their hope anymore. Instead, five is the, the goal for them. And even then, I don't think they can buy into this round. Obviously, they don't have enough to buy on everyone. Only walks it could actually get the investment. So likely, they have to take the one eco. And at that point, try and fight back up to four. Again, with this being the map choice of Godsend and a map that most parts don't play a lot. We were thinking, okay, Godsend should be able to get themselves this map victory. It's then moving on to the next two where most sports are going to be trouble for them, even though Godsend can play both Train and Nuke. But we were expecting more from most sports. They're really just not showing up on an individual level, which is normally the, the thing you can say about these, these level of teams. Okay, sure, even if it's not a map they don't play, if they're against a team that you would definitely consider to be worse than them, normally you can give them some hope because of how, how good they are as individuals. But no, Godsend are playing fantastic as well right now. It's something you have to come to expect. Again, I mentioned this about the North game. The word upset was being thrown around quite a bit, and I was really surprised with that because Godsend are one hell of a strong team, and honestly, up against North, I I mean, I think I said it to you before that game even started when we were just looking over the games that that would be a 2-0 to Godsend. I, partially because of just a lack of belief in the North lineup at the moment, and also because we know Godsend are so strong. It's... That was an unusual to see, but I think I would definitely side with the word upset up against Mouse Sports, although their results have been somewhat shaky. This man right here, Madden, the dude is an unbelievable player when it comes to rifling. I mean, he was brought onto this lineup. There was, like, suspicions. They played against him in some open qualifiers, uh, the, the old lineup of No Chance, and they were looking for a fifth at the time. He dropped 50 kills in three maps, and they were like, all right, this guy's either... A prodigy like a god or he's cheating so let's trial him and figure out which one it is and they figured out it was it was the prodigy part it was unbelievable his first international line at we play he was a top rated player and there were some amazing teams at that event i mean oops he's not good at nading though <laughs> no apparently not <laughs> You, like, you've been praising him too much. He God had to damn it, man! Downplay himself. I'm here. I'm not perfect. I'm here hyping you up, bro, and you're gonna nade your Ooh. teammate. Walks it has a good chance here, though. Oh, not gonna hit the shot. The little jiggle beat to bait it out. Early mid control gonna be the goal here for God sent us. They should be able to find it without really too much trouble. You're seeing the CTs are not really able to hold it down. But Chris J at the moment, because of this, is stuck in towards connector. I do believe they know he's here. He's gonna try and fall back. I, he shot for some reason. That gave away his position. He wasn't able to open the door. Was it just not working? Was, was the EK not working on opening the door? It doesn't matter, he was inspecting it, but frozen. As he takes the wall bang on to Sticko eventually, things are settling out into an alright situation for Mouse Sports, considering how most rounds have gone. The up gets a pick, and now they've got the advantage. 
Yeah, this is, again, one of the better positions we've seen most sports in. They need these final two rounds if they want to feel any more comfortable moving into the second half. And even then, they will need the pistol to start fighting, uh, fighting back into this game. Not going to be counting out God Sento in this three on four. They are setting themselves up for the A hit. The issue is already three players for the CT side have located themselves up in the position. Woxic again, not going to be able to connect. The flash did come in, but it didn't blind them. He won't miss the second shot, though. Able to take down Crystal. It's all on Madden. And despite being able to get that first player peeking in, Woxic just swings around the bomb site, feeling a little, bit, a little bit more confident there. And bringing a third round up onto the board for Mouseport. But again, they need this fourth one, and obviously they're not going to be going up against any sort of a weaker investment. Everything in play. There's even double up setup here for Godsend. I would imagine there's a rifle as well for Crystal. I think that's why he's dropped over that op. Yeah, going to be trying to work with both of them, see if he can get an early pick with the op potentially, and then move back for the rifle, obviously, to make it that bit easier. Once he has to start actually moving forward, forward towards the bomb site itself. Look at this, though. Wastic with the op just going straight out mid. They're going for these peaks a lot, but they're not really using flashes or anything. Just swinging on in, and that that's going to hurt you in the end of the day. It certainly has so far. Mouse sports do look... I say a little bit lost on overpass because I don't want to believe that this is the team we're going to see when it swaps over to the next map. And I don't believe that for a moment. I think this is... God sent a really good on overpass. They're a solid team. Mouse Sports, they played it once in the last three months. It's not a map they've got a lot of officials on. We can also presume not a lot of practice or at least not practice that goes well. So I can respect them having a poor performance here. I think this is a really strong punish pick by Godsent. They put good thought into this veto and got it out into a pretty good fashion for them. Nuke, I, I actually really want this to go to three maps because Nuke is a curiosity for me as to how things would go when we get there. I watched that back, but I'm pretty sure they did throw a flash in and went over in the playground. Oh, really? I believe that's what happened. Yeah, I, I could see like a faint. That shows the trail. discomfort of, of the map for sure. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not one that most sports feel too comfortable on, and I do expect a lot more from them on the upcoming map. Zen bounces out, Monster. Okay, finds Carrigan up close. Frozen is actually one of the players with the AWP right now, and he's definitely not going to be missing. And already hitting two, eventually will be overwhelmed by the players pushing in from both sides. But has given Rops a fighting chance now. He is still left one on two, despite already finding one. And I believe he has an idea that he could be getting flanked out at this point. Look how low the time is getting. They're just going to have to go ahead and stick that bomb plant. Rob's pushing out. If he can get this first kill towards Evan, there's definitely a chance. And there we go. Zen pinned in on the bomb site. 50 health. He's not able to hit the headshot, though. Welcome back, everybody. God sent versus Mouse. Half number two going live. As God sent of 12 rounds, it's been one hell of a dominant first half from them on the attacking side, shutting Mouse out at every single corner. But now Maus are on the attack. They get to set the pace themselves and not be exploited as much when it comes to the lack of understanding of the map that, that we saw from their lack of comfort. Comfort, I should say. Godsent, though, might decide to come through on some aggressive plays to catch them off guard. But for now, on the pistol, we're not going to see that. Zen also heard that reload going down towards the bottom of Connector, as minimal a detail as that might seem. But it might make them think that players are potentially going to come out towards short or B soon. They do have those nades, so I'd imagine they will try and wrap some around towards long to be able to set them up. A lot of teams like to do them from across, and yeah, I believe that's where Carrigan's going to be going. Because with that, then the Molotov can actually be put down towards the truck, I believe is probably where they would put it. So it definitely seems like it's going to be committed towards A. Only really now has that information been found as well. The rotations, though, are going to be coming up extremely quickly. The issue is, though, the smoke's already in place. You see, obviously, the player who's on the bomb side by being Madden, he didn't want to stick around and risk going down. So instead, he falls back. He's going to try and do what he can. And with the nades, they actually connect a pretty decent amount of damage now to set themselves up to move in for this retake. Moving on forward. God sent. Looking to keep their streak of rounds going. But it's not going well to start it off. Mao's returning a couple of frags. Madden, the one to lead the charge, and the only one to make it to the site. He's left in a 1v4, but already two kills under his belt. Clears out long. He hasn't got anything to work with here. Not even a kit on his belt. Oh, he has got the kit, sorry, but no smoke to block it off. So he'd have to take the fights, and just no time anymore. Uh, it's gone. He'd have to stick it at this point. Round's already won. Mouseports take it, even with the kill to close it out. It would have had to be an ace clutch and a defuse. And that, even for Madden, is just a little bit too much to ask. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a lot too much. <laughs> <laughs> Qu quite a bit too much, for sure, anyway. 
most players, unless faced with a team making a lot of mistakes, are, are not really mm -hmm. going to be given the, the one on fives because it's just impossible. As long as they peek you together, have a couple different angles and such secured, then it really shouldn't be possible ever. Obviously, you need the, the strong play custom, uh, accompanying those mistakes, but let's see. I mean, a fourth play coming in, there's a Nova. Again, I think we've seen like one Nova yesterday. Normally, don't have Mag 7 maybe being a little bit more common, but Crystal. He does want to bring this weapon out, and with the skill, and now a Deagle pushed up on mid. I was going to say a bit of ground being covered. Madden mustn't have noticed Woxic was pretty much in his crosser at that point, because he ends up getting tapped in the face. Michael Lele then as well going to get tapped in the face by an AK. As Woxic gets his second kill of the round, so a good start into this one. It seems like Mouse Courts shouldn't really have much trouble overcoming this force by. With that then, likely bringing themselves up to six rounds. And suddenly, uh, if the first gun round was to go in their favor, we could be looking at, a, again, a potentially competitive map here for Mouse Sports, despite having such a poor start. So we can never count them out completely. Ooh, I love the Crystals. I love Crystals got a Nova. He's down towards Connector, hoping to just rattle off some shots, but I think they're probably going to end up saving at this point. Mao's not even going near them on water. And Molly's they're starting to make a move. I mean, what's Crystal going to be able to do coming in with a Nova to retake that side unless someone gets aggressive? He's playing utility support. Around goes one. Sticko for a kill. Picks himself up a Mac 10 but there's the problem for Crystal, right? That range just doesn't work out. He tries to rattle off a few more shots, but it's not going to happen. Bomb not planted for Mouse, but they get all the kills and clean it up nicely. When you look at Godsend, you know, one thing that surprised me for quite a bit was Zen. I'd say probably like December last year, or a little bit before. He transitioned from this role where he was never really one that you would expect. It was like Madden and Sticko, right, that you would expect to do a lot of the damage. And Zen, we always looked at, and I've heard referred to even more recently, as a support player on the team. He's anything but. I mean, when this guy gets off, goes off, he goes off. Dude's it's always been a monster, though. Maybe yeah. maybe since he's fit into this lineup, yeah, he was perhaps put into more of a role like that, but he has always been an extremely capable mm -hmm. player. I would say a long time, uh, alongside the likes of Sticko in terms of Willem being, being willing to actually give up those star positions, knowing that, okay, yeah, I can still get enough done from these maybe weaker spots on, on the holds and such. I, I can let them shine, let them get what they need, and then I, I'll be there to do my job all the time, and it's a, it's a reliable and consistent team in that way. Well, that's it, right? You've just got so many people that can step it up and get it done when it's needed. Zen, Madden, Sticko on the rifles. It'd be absolute monsters. Not like Michael Lele doesn't have his game. Crystal plays. And uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, just memeing. Crystal, he's actually had some pretty good games recently. But he's one of the IGLs, I think, that gets hit a little bit more. I'd put him in with kind of Exist. It just, it takes a toll on their performance for sure. But you do see them step it up when they're in clutch situations. Don't got to worry about any of their teammates. Just thinking about their game. Oh, Yeah, no, Crystal's always been a, a more than capable player and a, a strong leader as well. That Molotov was down right there. Kind of boring that player around the pillar. So you would imagine they do know he's there. And at the end, he steps out, Carrigan is ensured the information. Follows up with two more against the Cavalierless opponents. You're not really expecting anything less than this really you, you do want to be surviving with all five players especially when you have a couple of those weaker weapons including the smg and some galils as well so they are able to keep those in play with that keep themselves quite a bit of money as well and give the opportunity for this for this to be a bit of a bonus round not exactly because frozen has spent everything in order to actually go ahead and upgrade to the ak but that gives them a, a buy that is full of rifles they've got rid of that mac 10 they're coming into this first gun round realizing that it is obviously a very important round for them considering they are down by six still so they know that they need to try and pick this one up to, to really make that comeback a reality. If God sent there to find it, then we will see another gun round, of course, from Mouse Sports, but it gets a little bit dodgy at that point. Now, this is the one that definitely matters. Mouse Sports got to prove that it was just consistent rounds. Now, it was their CT side. They were a little bit uncomfortable, but they're terrorists, but they've got a grip on it. They did well against Fnatic. I think it was seven rounds they picked up T side. They did a lot better than their counter terrorists. I know it would have been five, wouldn't it? Because it was a 1611. Yeah, but it's so. it was five. Yeah, it was five seven in the end. Still, they won a decent portion of attacking rounds. They don't know late on in the game. It was flash around the corner. Madden's blind, but they haven't spotted him yet. Crystal not able to make the hold happen, and they suspect Madden might be here. But in an elevated position, they didn't even land the shots. ADHP as he deletes two, and a four v three develops. Mouse sports behind by a bit. They look to move down to monster. 
Oh, they were actually for a second. Rops moves into water. The other two grouping up. But look at this flank. Madden has decided to continue his aggression and connector and come up behind these players. I don't think he'll make it here in time, though. What's then already pushing out towards the site itself? Yeah, not in time to be able to actually get the kills before they move into the bomb site. But he could set himself up if his other teammates as well are willing to just play for the retake at that point. The mm -hmm. issue is they don't have a kiss, so it would be perfect if he actually can get them another kill here before they move forward. And we'll start doing so now. Okay, gonna spot Woxic. Eventually gets that kill, actually drops the bomb. Doesn't expect Frozen to be still up close though on Monster, so we'll end up falling quickly. And if Woxic gets this kill in Graffiti, they should be given the room to plant that bomb. As I said, that Michael Lele still gets the kill on the rocks, but the bomb does go down indeed. So Frozen, he has a small chance here, but he's already low. He needs to hit some headshots. Or just the spray towards Michael Lele apparently is going to be enough. Not actually going to reposition himself around towards short either. Instead, just backing off passive and monster. I, I guess gambling that they're not going to have the defuse kit, which they don't currently. So Sticko, he's in a very difficult predicament. He's got himself a flashbang. That's all he's got to work with. Popping it on short though. Frozen thinks he's sticking it. But he's spotted now. No wires on the bomb. He knows he's not. And Sticko he knows the round is pretty much over at this point. Just going to creep out to short. Try to get the exit frag on him. And he should as well. Frozen running with knife out. That's a kill. But unfortunately... Whoops. What the hell? Did that you was get some, that weird audio? Yeah, the weird like ear popping. Like being in a, an airplane. Oh, Lord. We're sorry, stream. <laughs> <laughs> My ears. But yeah. yeah, no. We're, we actually are sorry about that. I think that was happening in the Hawk. It's a GoTV thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's really it's like weird. too. Five rounds between them, though. Mouseport's picking that one up is exactly what they needed. As tight as it came in the end. A big clutch by Frozen. And 12 to 7. Godsend's still able to get an investment, but it does feature the UMP. That's why it was so important for Sticko to save and not just go crazy trying to defuse it. Through the molly we go. All right, Frozen. Your maid's a little late coming through. Had that have come in two seconds earlier, Frozen would be in a lot of trouble. I still took a, a fairly substantial amount of damage, especially when you consider, obviously, those M4s and the UMPs as well. They'll have a, a, an especially easier time if they're going to be hitting the headshot. And also, with just spamming away towards the body, Woxic has found himself a kill. My camera was off. Oopsie doopsie. It is actually Crystal who goes down early on in this round. So not a good start for Godsend already being on the weaker investment. Uh, off the back of the damage on Frozen, we were like, okay, that's a decent spot to have. They do have Madden pushed up so aggressively in Connector, though. So this is dangerous, and I believe he has a bit of support from Sticko if needed. Indeed he does. Sticko's going to be watching short for the moment, but could come in and help. Quick update. Copenhagen Flames just beat FaZe Clan. 16-12 oh, on Inferno. Not in the first map, but it's an impressive start for the Flames. The audio pop, whatever that was. Yeah, this is not looking good. Madden has fallen as well now. Sticko's still in connector, which I don't think they're going to expect, but they may be at least somewhat cautious. With that, it at least gives them the chance to actually stack two on the A bomb site, so that is a big positive. Although, if Rops walks into B and realizes it's open at that point, they'll probably start moving back down connector, so then maybe they'd be caught off guard by Sticko. So I'm not going to count them completely out of this round. Now nah, they have to commit now. Not enough time if they were to go back. Frozen actually like finds that open in either way. Michael Lele's hit in the corner, and even if he had got that first kill, it still would have been so difficult. There was a chance there. Sticko actually denied the bomb plant. But Woxix, he just swings around, ends that, ends that, and really stops those weapons from being any trouble any longer. 12 for Godsend, 4 now in the difference. Uh, sorry, 8 for Mouseports to the 12 of Godsend, so only 4 now in the difference. This is getting a little bit scary for them, if we're being honest. As you said, the T side for Mouseports did look kind of decent up against Fnatic. It was the CT side that they really struggled on. Being the same here again... But Mouseports now, they're on the T side. They've got off to a really good start up 5-0. to zero, And they're not against Fnatic. They're against Godsend, who sure are a good team. But they're not Fnatic. Well, that's it. The CT side is still a bit of a task, as we said. Even with such a strong score at the halftime. There were scary times ahead. Mouseports got off to the good start, though. Their terror side. Pistol, first gun, second gun round. Godsend still have time to answer back and stop them. Problem is, once that machine gets rolling, the caliber difference between these two teams could start to really separate them. Mouseports look to move through Connector. Very late on in the game, taking any control outside of A as well. And Godsend, they're tucked in passive, so they won't really lose that or suffer too heavily because of it. They, they know they've given up control in Connector. As the smoke comes through the toilets, that's almost playing out better for Godsend. Sitting down with Deagles, they're happy to allow them in close and try to take those duels. But in fact, Mouse 
I tail it down to B where stick goes quick to deagle Chris J off the map. And a 4v5, a flank from Madden on the way. This could be very dangerous for Mouse as they get held back by what little utility is left for Dotson. That's a big opening though. That should let them start moving forward. As I said, I'm Michael Lele actually picking one off with the P250. Now allowing even Madden to get himself an AK as he's coming in on that flank. They're just delaying them so massively. This is going to be such a big issue for them. They have no idea. Still dealing with those players in the pit. Woxic is beginning to watch the flank and I believe has spotted Crystal. Indeed, connecting the shot but not the kill. They still need to deal with first Zen up close in the pit. And there we go. Frozen, oh no. Wait, hang on. Madden's just going to run through the smoke. Does deny the bomb plant, but fortunately Frozen was covering at that moment so he's not going to be able to do too much else the round will be finished off for most parts a close one though a lot of damage being done and all of these rounds have been relatively close i mean we've seen of course the ones where it was only pistols for god sent being quite easy for most parts they weren't really dropping too much apart from uh, i believe a couple of kills in one of them but now there's three rounds in the difference and suddenly what was looking like an almost confirmed map for god sent is beginning to slip away from them you have a very top-heavy scoreboard as well, actually. That's one thing that's worth noting, because obviously that's a little bit easier to work with when you're on the T side. Mm -hmm. Those weaknesses, not as easy to contain when you're on the defense. You can't dictate where the fight comes in or who starts it. But they do dictate a little bit of an early duel with Sticko rushing down, grabbing the AWP opening frag. Double up setup for Godsent. One that's obviously caught Mouse Sports off guard initially, not expecting that kind of aggression. And not expecting him to stick around either. Rops looking to just clear the angle, but he walks straight into the scopes of Sticko. And a double kill to completely clear B now. As Godsend will be challenged on this A bomb site. Is there a boost going on? For long, I, I presume there is. Because we're missing a player on the right. Yeah, radar. there is. There is indeed. There we go. It's, someone's up on Madden's head. Michael, Michael Lele, you'd imagine. Yeah, it is with the AWP. As mm -hmm. you could guess, he's going to be trying to find one in towards the bathroom. So, yeah, swapping things up here, realizing how important this round is, being able to find two openings from Sticko, and now having an angle here that likely won't be expected by the first player to peek out. So this is going to be tough. Indeed, bomb. Michael Lele gets that kill on Gargan. That's the bomb that's dropped as well. Woxic is way further back in the bathrooms. Then you have Frozen over on Long, uh. who will actually find some success. Okay, he's gotten himself too. They know Michael Lele is close as well. Woxic on the up, gonna be able to find Zen, but now he's alone. He has to pull off the one on two clutch, and he's not gonna be expecting Sticko to be already posted up there from the truck. It was pretty much a crossfire. He Tracy almost mollied himself. One angle. Was it was the, was the molly that his own one? Uh, yeah, but it, it hit in the smoke, so it was all right. But uh, how do you throw it an inch? Fr well, I mean, it was so it was pointless. But the only point it would have served if it landed was that it would have mollied him. So, I mean, lucky that it didn't, I guess. But it, it wouldn't have made a difference either way. Thirteen to nine. God sent picking up the round at last. The double up setup is actually the saving grace. It's the only thing that pulls them across the line. But there is still a lot of room for Mouse Sports to bounce back. They've got themselves money enough to buy here. And a fast play to be looking to completely overwhelm them. Stopping Sticko from getting in position on the op. But he has just set up on short instead. Falling back then right afterwards. And another opening duel for the AWP of Sticko. They're not ready. The flashes oh. are perfect. Yeah, but unfortunately, only good for one kill for Woxic. Sticko and Crystal instantly pulling back. And as you can see, the bomb now down and monster. Is that smoke covering it off completely is the question. Is there any hope of them retrieving it? I believe so. I think it is in just a little bit too deep. This is a very difficult position right now for most parts. If they lose this round, they're buying the next. is going to be severely lacking. They could even be looking at the eco potentially. Another perfect flash. This time, Rops will capitalize on it. Two being found. And the recovery of the bomb. That is absolutely massive now. I, I don't believe if they know that they know that both of these players are still on towards B. But they are trying to at least fake out the rotation up towards that A bomb site so that they can try and separate these CTs who for the moment haven't fell for it. No, they are sticking down. Perhaps just playing the gamble, knowing that there's a possibility they go A, and if they do, they'll just retake it. Molly comes over, confirming their suspicions that this will be a B hit. Madden has to get something done with this off, though. 13 HP. They're distracted with Michael Lele. They never suspect Madden to be there as well. They thought they'd sold the fake, but in fact, they had not. 14 to 9. And now look at the money for Mouse Sports. Getting a comfortable buy up isn't really possible, and they go in for the just force buy. Screw it. They don't want to play for an overtime. And it's going to have three SMGs in play. Rops, he can take an AK even after buying that smoke and flash. 
but lacking head armor and that's that's not not great really is it he's taking a molly instead of a helmet I guess double op setup but the maybe UMP the needed. M4 is uh maybe needed for whatever sort of plan they have in mind perhaps sure. as an execute that he needs to have that molly for and yeah, I believe that was the case had thrown it in is now setting himself up over towards outside monsters the smokes and flashes move in towards the B bomb site so it is going to be again this B hit early on in the round Zendo already finding the open and Sticko playing up around this smoke right now at monster they have no idea he should be able to get at least one from this oh that is a whiff spray and suddenly most sports have recovered it is a three on two in their favor and Sticko is probably going to be hitting himself for that one but it's not over especially as Madden finds the bomb plant they're not quite before it can go down but he does bring them into a good two on two and that molotov is perfect walks it gonna be forced forward it doesn't get it, it doesn't manage to get the kill but it does great damage and michael lele i was gonna say could just use the pistol but never mind tries the no scope will get dropped by the mac 10 and frozen ends it 10 for mouse sports but got sent up on 14 already they do unfortunately have to take an eco here so we will see most sports having a chance again to claw back a few rounds but they're gonna have a few more opportunities to try and at least get that comfort of overtime you know sticko is just not going to get away with that with the twitch chat He's no, get absolutely not. roasted. <laughs> we I was like, you should at least second. get one kill. I wanted to say it's a good position to be picking up a couple, especially oh, yeah. if he took his time. But the spray, which is very awkward, the mm -hmm. player was going down the ramp, so I guess the kind of change of elevation just messed up his spray pattern. Yeah, it, it was definitely a bit of nerves as well. That kicked him. And 14 to 10. Now Sports pulling off that round helps them a lot. They're up against pistols. This should be an 11th. And closing in that gap, there's only two buy rounds between them and a victory, and one forced buy in the end. Madden's again going to try to cause some havoc down below. Oh, excuse me. But he's not going to get away with it. Nade up as well. Doesn't do any damage. He's safe from it, but Chris J in, not from the spam of Sticko. Through the wall, grabbing himself a headshot. You know he's up close. They'll look to deal with him. Lots of damage being done, though. These couple of tags by the Deagles can end up doing a lot. They do deal with Sticko eventually, but they have no idea about it. Well, they do now. I kind of ruined that. Oh, man. And it spotted him. There's still a couple of players tagged up. And yeah, okay, Zan on the 5-7. Going to be able to get one parry. Can also be another low health player. Did he get blinded by a teammate? Because there was no flash assist for Zen. Not from any of his teammates anyway, but Carrigan definitely had his hand over his eyes. That must have been what happened with the flash coming over from Monster or something. Then will eventually fall, but still giving his team a man advantage in this position with Frozen being on 22 health. Godsend, they could steal this away. Oh, they definitely could. 20 seconds. Is, they've got to make a move. Flank already coming down. Crystal's on his way in connector. He's going to be spotted. Not taken down. They don't have time to commit to that. It's time to hit the site. 12 seconds left. Pistols lurking around every corner, both on this site. Waxik on the cross, going to be spotted, tagged up. P250 finishes him, and no time to plant. It's over. Godsend have actually won that with just pistols. What a whiff by Mouse Sports, making up for Stickos in the previous. Uh, again, though, this map here, we weren't expecting Mouse Sports to be getting the victory on it if we were being real. Going on to train and Nuka's like, we're, okay, yeah, Mouse Sports, that's where they should really be showing what they're capable of. It's maps that they do play, that they have pretty solid results on. But obviously, Godsend, they're still able to play those maps, and they've looked pretty good here on Overpass. The second half certainly has been shaky. There's been a, a few moments that have been questionable. What the hell? My cam got stuck in third person. That was really weird. I mean, let's not be negative Nancys about it, right? Mouseports have made an incredible comeback, and it was just a terrible CT half that has locked them out of contention in this, more or less. With a weak buy here, they're unlikely to follow through, and this should be 16 to 10 for Godsent. But you can definitely maintain hope. Hold on, Sticko caught with a nade out, makes it around the corner, and even goes to short to find one a second as well. He is determined to make up for past mistakes. The nades, the molly. Oh, that's tragic. And Sticko aces the final round.